Well, now for my subject of the week. Now, last subject I talked about on my ride was switching to universal time. And this time I'm going to talk about changing the currency. I think this is something that's maybe not so much a necessity, but I think just the psychological part of it could probably make a big difference. In other words, my idea is, let's issue a new currency, and it can be similar to what we have right now. I mean, the doesn't have to be radical changes, just enough so you can tell the difference. Maybe a different color of coins, make the silver ones copper, the copper ones silver, but have them be worth 10 times what the old currency used to be worth. I mean, they're talking about eliminating the penny because of the fact that uh, there's nothing you can buy with a penny. I mean, you can even put several pennies together and it's just, they're of so little worth. And I think in Canada and Australia and other places they've totally gotten rid of, there is no such thing as a penny. But why not just have a new penny that is worth 10 times as much like a dime? Then you could put a few together and actually buy an item. Not an expensive one, but you actually could. And then uh, we would set a date for all of the accounts, say if you have investment accounts or a bank account or savings, something like that, it would be, uh, on a certain day, it would be switched into denominations of new currency. I'm sure your uh, $10,000 bank account would drop down to $1,000, but it would be $1,000 new currency, which would be 10 times the value. And you would give people a set time to turn in their old currency um, probably for a while you would even, on your purchases, be able to use it interchangeably. I mean, they deal with two, uh, two different currencies when you buy stuff on the border. If you're on the United States border near Canada or in, in Canada near the United States border, those cashiers handle two types of currency all the time and even do the uh, exchanges through the register. You'd have a limited time when you were shopping. But it's a good time now because so few people anymore use currency. They uh, you see the lines and pretty much everybody in stores now are using a credit card and you can really see the effects because the last two times I was at a store and the credit card machines didn't work, uh, people said, well, well, you can still check out but we're only taking cash because we can't get the credit card machines to work. All of a sudden about 90% of the customers uh, put their merchandise down and just walked out of the store. So that kind of tells you how we're... Uh, getting away away from a cash society. We're becoming very much a cashless society. So you could have, uh, say, six months of time or any set period where you could use it interchangeably. And then after that, if you had old currency, uh, you couldn't use it to make purchases, but you could take it to any local bank and get it exchanged. And then say after a, a few years, you could, uh, I'm not gonna make this arrow probably, nope. After a few years, you could uh, take it to uh, maybe just regional banks, maybe, you know, just so that it's uh, not so much of a hassle. And uh, if it's like you find some old currency from 10 years ago, well, you uh, have to take it to a bank in Chicago, New York, Los Angeles, some major city, and then maybe even pay a 1% or 2% fee to uh, get it exchanged to new currency just for uh, convenience sake. And, uh, I think the psychological part of it would be great. I mean, look over there. Gasoline is $3.97 a gallon. It would drop down to 39.7 cents new currency, which would not be too much different than when I started driving. When I started driving in 1974, I think regular was 32 cents a gallon, and ethyl, which they called it, or premium, was 34 cents a gallon. And sure, the salaries would drop. If you were making $10 an hour, you'd be making $1 an hour, but then... Uh, also, your rent on your apartments, if you're paying $550 a month rent on your apartment, you'd be paying $55 all of a sudden. So it would all equal out, and I think just psychologically, and not having to deal with such large numbers, too. And then that way we would still have a functioning penny. I mean, we, all the currencies would still be functioning. And the other thing that, um, with the currency we have now, I notice so many places will not take a $100 bill, but yet, if you look at it compared to when I was a kid, um, a $100 bill is only worth about what $10 was worth back in 1970. I mean, a house was, a really good house was $30,000, and now a house is about $300,000. I 
you could buy a car. Some cars for $1,500. I think about the most expensive car when I was a kid was around $3,000. Now $25,000 to $30,000 for a pretty decent car. I mean, if you want a fully loaded pickup truck, you might be talking somewhere up of $45,000, $50,000. Well, in new currency, it would be $5,000. $30,000 car would be $3,000. But yeah, I think the thing that sparked it in my mind was that fact of uh, people not taking $100 bills at a lot of establishments. They uh, no bill larger than a 20. And uh, it just seems so ridiculous because if you think about what the $100 bill is worth now compared to what it was worth, I mean, it's even under the most conservative estimates, it could uh, I could get way more stuff back in 1970 with $20. Groceries, gas, things like that than I could with a $100 bill nowadays. So anyway, that was my subject for the day. What do you guys think about it? New currency? That way we can keep the penny? Or stay where we are right now and just keep what we got? And uh, let's just join the rest of the world and just get rid of the penny and say it's so worthless anyway. You can't buy anything with it. And we'll just round all the prices to the nearest five and just uh, do away with the penny altogether.